Nikocado has had his career redeemed, or has he? Everyone's favorite large and in charge barge of a man has come back hard, and I'm very excited for this new chapter of Nikocado because he's out of his white roomed purgatory. Now, Oompavilla, little YouTuber, you may have heard of him, recently reached out to Nick and formed what I can only describe as a pact with a red shirted demon. And it started out simply with a collaborative video where Caleb paid Nikocado to come out and and scoot around on a mobility scooter. But it gets deeper than that. They started a friendship and a business together. Now, for some reason, the internet has ran with Nikocado being a character, but he's somewhere in the middle. And this has been explained by Caleb that he's part genius, part insane person, part character, but he's 100% Nikocado. Okay. I want a cheeseburger. I want a chip. I want a quadruple. I want a six chapel. I can't speak Spanish. So a lot of people have had a hard time pinning down what this guy exactly was. But more importantly, us Nikocado lore historians got important facts confirmed from the mouth of the wide horse itself. Anyway, for example, if you wanted to know which one's bigger, Nikocado or Orland, Caleb and Nick confirmed that Nick is bigger. I'm gonna leave that one uh, as it is. I'm not gonna explain any further. You know, there's also personal things about Nick that are revealed that are really interesting and go a long way to humanizing the guy that we've seen cry a thousand times while he eats Takis in front of a white wall in his apartment somewhere down in Florida. There's just so much that you learn through Caleb and Nick, through both the DeFire podcast that they started together, as well as a Some Ordinary podcast where Caleb goes on about how Nikocado is as a person and just really what his kind of character is as an individual. It really should be commended. Caleb and Nikocado's like uh, straight man, funny man thing going on is really great. This content is really amazing. And I really do think that if you're gonna watch anything, you should look at the DeFire podcast. It's by far the most interesting and uh, enlightening part of Nikocado. And you get to see how vulnerable he is and see him be genuine, especially with the back and forth with H3. Because if you don't know, H3 was going to be having Nikocado on, but hey man, I wouldn't want to be in the same room as H3 because the guy's genuine with big air quotes. You know, H3 plays nice, but he's actually trying to think of how he can use that as social capital later. And so you really get to see that drama unfold there. But Nikocado's in a new drama because he can't keep out of it. You see, internet, despite Nikocado's immense size, he doesn't actually make bread because the videos are expensive and his content is so outrageous, he often gets demonetized. Caleb is actually paying Nikocado because Nick isn't making the kind of money he used to. Not saying Nick is in dire straits, but the guy is very open about being much more strapped for cash than he used to be in the past. So aside from Nikocado not having any bread, what is this elephant in the room? Well, Nikocado has been abusing his uh, rights as an individual. You see, internet, Nikocado copyright struck some people, meme channels, and understanding the context to this one was a little weird. This drama is mildly old, but commentary folks like Pyro and my boy Dank covered it, so I was looking around thinking there feels like there's a missing piece. And Dank didn't even know some of this until I told him and after I went through reading on Twitter. So these meme channels often make a lot of memes about Nikocado and he's never taken them down before. He usually brushes it off and the most he'll do is make a video trying to capitalize on somebody big talking about him. So, you know, for example, he'll call out moist critical and instead call him moist cuticles, stuff like that. Um, so what's happened here with the meme channels? And this is where Crackback enters the picture. You see, Crackback developed a mobile game called Avocado Bulk as in Crack worked to make this game a reality. He was involved in the development. The game goes up on the Google Play Store, Bob's your uncle. Crack would then use memes to promote this creation of his. Then Nikocado struck Crack's memes down using the copyright system. 
Now generally, these memes are transformative and considered fair use. However, it seems like memes, or in this case, the memes that Crack was making, were a roundabout way of advertising Avocado Bulk the game. Or at least that's how it appears based on the tweet conversations. The game also went down, and Crack even commented on that. So for example, we have this guy saying, wait until he discovers your game, skull emoji, he found out about it a few days ago. That's why I'm thinking he's coming after me. And then obviously they're talking about it and joking and making memes about it. Crackback also left a comment saying, correct, and his manager respectfully sent an email to the team to stop the game, which is understandable. And I should have been more careful instead of thinking it's just a meme game. However, the false takedowns on YouTube are insane and just goes to show he's just as toxic as a person in the videos as in real life. And this is interesting because it seems to counteract what is being said on Twitter as well. This kind of makes it sound like Crack is much more separated from the game. He has a conversation with another meme creator, uh, Cyrenek, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, and, you know, obviously they're talking about disputing the claims. Now, you can dispute the claims, and I would argue that Crackback should dispute the claims. He has every reason to, and I think he can definitely get past that. I can't see Nikocado defending this or bringing this to court. And it all kind of hinges on what Crack's involvement in the game is and what these videos' purposes were outside of being memes, were they advertisements for the game and all that. Because when you put stuff in a game and try to use someone's likeness in a game, what is that versus it being parody and all of that and the rules change a little bit when you're doing something like that versus doing youtube but again i i am not a attorney in any of this i i am just saying that there was this game here crack is saying that he's doing this for promoting the game i'm 99 percent sure i'm in the wrong this time crack made these memes to promote the game and so then is nick taking these down because these are promoting the game why do you use a copyright strike to do that when there are other systems in place to handle that situation? So you see where this gets a bit more complicated than someone just making memes. I imagine the game went down because they noticed it and it's not like Nikocado was making residuals from his likeness being used in a mobile app. Now I'm very free with my use of the internet so I don't think it should have been taken down but that seems like a more likely reason for him to target it considering he had constantly been mentioning how he doesn't have bread to do what he does. Granted, who knows the specifics of Nick's income and situation. Uh, the websites online are usually wrong about how much a YouTuber makes, so don't use them as evidence of the income because I've seen YouTubers' income and they vary wildly from those websites that apparently are cataloging how much a YouTuber makes. It also does seem like him and Orlin are actually split like for real no joke, but it's really hard to say considering they still make content together, but the reality of that seems obfuscated by memes and stuff that Nikocado himself says. It's important to note that the Avocado Bulk team was reached out to. I don't understand why someone just didn't reach out to Crack personally. Same for the other meme creator, Endocher, especially because these memes were related to be like ads for the mobile game. I'm certain Nick could have reached out to these individuals in order to take those memes down if he felt they were a problem. Nick is involved in all this somehow, but you know, I have hunches and I guess Logan Paul's apology, so my hunch is there's something we're missing here. I'm not saying the meme makers are in the wrong, I'm saying I'm looking at this puzzle and I'm seeing missing pieces. Why would Nick or Nick's manager, which C income thing I mentioned earlier, why would they reach out to the devs but not crack back? If they knew these two were linked, why wouldn't they? Wouldn't it make more sense? There's the copyright system on Google Play, they could have sniped it there, but based on the facts, it doesn't seem like they did snipe it using that copyright system. It seems like it was more of a cordial, personal, professional reach out. Endocher was another anomaly in this. Uh, Endocher's another meme creator in this story, and I actually reached out to them personally. I wanted to see what they knew or what they had in their memes that exactly got their channel taken down. Well, it took a minute for them to respond, and Endocher basically just said it was memeing. Unfortunately, they don't have the specifics, so they can't show me any evidence of what these memes contained, but my theory can't really be confirmed either way if I had those videos or not. I just assume it had to do with the game, 
but I am making a leap there. I mean, right now we're seeing how there are better channels for Nick to deal with this, and the most important part of this isn't usually Nick's MO. He's not the kind of guy to take videos down. And I consider myself somewhat of a fat man expert here. Obviously, this is super cringe to lose the big funny creators, so you can find their new channels linked below because trust me, I've been there getting false strikes that I didn't want on my channel. Uh, YouTube puts a man in some dark places, so hopefully you guys can recoup whatever has uh, affected you negatively. But hey, what's a Nick Akato comeback story without a bit of YouTube drama? It doesn't seem like Nick and Caleb are stopping anytime soon. Outside of the coverage that I and my peers provide, it's not like most people care if a meme channel is disappearing. They don't really notice when it happens. However, I'm a YouTuber, I got plenty of enemies, I know how it is. Hey, if you like this video, I'm on TikTok and Twitch and all of these places that you see here. Come over, I'm, I'm live maybe, I don't know, or go to my TikTok and follow it so that way I can get features I need. Goodbye.